And in this country, we have a Bank of Canada interest rate decision on Wednesday. Economists on average are not expecting the Bank of Canada to make a change in rates at this point. Of course, we've watched them steadily move higher to fight inflation. They are currently sitting at the 5% level. Meanwhile, the bank itself is once again facing political pressure. Over the weekend, Ontario's Premier, Doug Ford, once again called on the Bank of Canada to pause on more rate hikes, posting to social media a letter he sent to the bank governor, Tiff Macklem, saying millions of Canadians are struggling to make ends meet. Andrew Kelvin is head of Canadian and Global Rate Strategy at TD Securities, and he joins us with a preview of what we can expect on the Bank of Canada front. Nice to see you. Thank you for having me. Okay, let's start with, first of all, your expectations. What do you think the Bank of Canada is going to do this week? The Bank of Canada will almost unanimously, they're expected to leave the interest rate unchanged at 5%. However, as much as they're going to argue that rate hikes are working to slow demand, because that is sort of the purpose here is to slow demand, to slow growth, um, I think they will maintain sort of a hawkish tone overall, because even if inflation has come in a little bit lower than expected of late, it's still much too high for the Bank of Canada's comfort. For that reason, I expect them to pledge once again to, uh, to restore price stability for Canadians. People have gotten used to this message of the tough fight against inflation. What's making it so tough right now? Uh, inflation... There's a lot of components to this. I yeah. mean, part of it is energy prices have moved higher of late, uh, even if they've come off a little bit more recently. Uh, partly it is the fact that shelter prices have not responded quite as um, negatively as perhaps we would have anticipated in response to uh, high interest rates. There's also the fact that high inflation for a long period of time becomes self-sustaining at a point. It feeds into wage expectations. It feeds into corporate price-setting behavior. And that has create a fairly broad inflationary impulse, which just takes a bit more time to bring under control. And against that backdrop, a lot of people are wondering at what point, if we've got these higher interest rates and some signs of a cooling economy, even if some parts of the economy have, have proven to be resilient, where do we land? Bloomberg just did a survey of economists where it sounds like the majority of respondents believe Canada can dodge a recession, but this idea of uh, higher interest rates for longer is going to tamper growth for the country overall. Absolutely. And if you look at that survey, people are expecting Canada to dodge a recession by the narrowest of margins. Right. Um, you know, a very slight increase for two quarters and a very slight decrease for two quarters is almost a distinction without a difference. Mm -hmm. um, we are in a stagflationary environment, and the bank's hope is that as more balance comes into the economy as we get a little bit more slack in the labor market, more job seekers, um, wage growth will slow, inflationary pressures will come off. However, if it happens too slowly, like I said a minute ago, one of the problems is that we were in an inflationary environment for so long, it becomes self-perpetuating. The Bank of Canada can't wait forever. They do need to see progress on the inflation front uh, through the winter to avoid another round of rate hikes. And um, so if they don't see the progress, then they would just have to get back on the rate hike train again, basically? I think that's exactly it. Their mandate's 2% yeah. inflation, and um, giving up isn't really an option. And yet, you know, you have some in the markets who feel like there are enough cracks in the economy, and it's hard sometimes to differentiate between Canada and the U.S., but we started the program by talking about a well-known Wall Street investor in Bill Ackman. He had been betting against um, uh, basically the bond market. Yep. And, and the fact that we'd seen bonds going down because a lot of people thought interest rates would stay higher or keep going higher, that, that fueled what was happening with bond yields themselves. Uh, he says he's covering some of those bets in part because he's starting to see some cracks in the economy. Uh, going back to that Bloomberg survey, it looks like on average um, economists anticipate that we could start seeing rate cuts in this country by the second quarter of next year. But again, it's not as if we would see a wholesale reversal on rate policy. So I guess just like you're, you're saying they have to watch very closely to see if they have to hike rates again, at some point we have to watch to see if they're going to have to move in the other direction on rates. Absolutely. The Bank of Canada doesn't want to have tight policy for the sake of having tight policy. As soon as they see indication that they've started to achieve their inflation target, they will, I would expect, start to ease policy rates, as you say, gradually. When you talk about the second quarter of next year, I would think that as almost the absolute earliest we could plausibly look for rate cuts, however. Really? We're not expecting them until the third quarter. Mm. And even then, um, I'm a little uncomfortable looking for them that early, if only because you know, inflation remains quite high in this country. Well, look, I know uh, as an economist, it's hard to put numbers around political rhetoric, but uh, we have seen 
uh, premiers in this country who have been calling on the Bank of Canada to stop raising rates. We highlight here in Ontario, the premier uh, once again uh, making that message known to the head of the Bank of Canada. Um, at what point, if we're not going to see rate cuts in your estimation until let's say the third quarter of next year, does the Bank of Canada have to start navigating all these political messages, especially if, if the issue of affordability doesn't go away for Canadians? Yeah, it's become quite tricky. I think the Bank of Canada's sometimes inconsistent messaging last year has invited some of this political pressure because um, we had instances where there'd be sort of a inopportunely timed um, op-eds in newspapers, for example, that were seen as trying to put pressure on the Bank of Canada around the sides. And because their communication was seen as um, inconsistent or it was more difficult to predict what they were doing based on previous communications, it opened up this perception that they are open to political influence. I don't think that what they hear from the premiers is having one iota of impact on what they're deciding to do. But like this is the second meeting in a row we've heard from premiers asking the Bank of Canada not to lift rates. Um, they can't be happy with that. And if anything, from my perspective, that just increases the urgency of bringing inflation back to target. Because mm. once we're back at the 2% inflation target, they don't need to worry about this sort of implicit political influence, um, you know, or attempts thereof, I should say.